Hello, this is Clayton with Aeromotive Research and Development Group. Today, we're going to be sharing with you one of our valuable uh, racing and automotive coolant system presentations. Today, we're going to be talking about heat vapors, foaming, and cavitation effects on performance. Now, here's the situation. Heat transfer or vapor bubbles are created as an important natural part of the heat transfer process within the cooling system. The problem is that the air bubbles within the system have 10 times the amount of compressibility as compared to regular fluid, even water or oil. Now the solution is to try to have a qualified system treatment that will effectively disperse these uh, heat transfer and vapor bubbles before the cooling system gets out of control, creating an uncontrolled irrecoverable forming and boiling. You do not want that. You do not want irrecoverable heat soak and boiling, okay, because um, chemistry does not overcome mechanical or engineering failure. Now what's nucleate boiling? Nucleate means it's a localized surface hot spot such as the upper cylinder wall and heads etc and it begins about uh, 85 degrees Fahrenheit atmospheric temperature. Now over time the nucleate vapor bu bubbles will spread over the entire system creating uh, a, a surface film boil. Now film boil is a continuous thin layer which covers the heating surface area and keeps the liquid cooling from contracting contacting the hotter surface. See, in other words, this insulating effect of the film boiling vapor reduces the rate of heat transfer and coolant uh, efficiency. All right, As the heat temperature difference increases, the vapor film becomes thicker, eventually reaching a maximum thickness or full boil. So what you want is it's okay to have just a little bit on there so it'll be able to transfer the heat from the metal to the fluid as the fluid's moving by, but if those bubbles start to increase so much, the heat cannot transfer through those bubbles, and it's a problem. Okay. Now, what's important is that if the heat, uh, if the water and metal surface tension does not reduce and are controlled, these small vapor bubbles or hydrogen heat and vapor bubbles emitting from the metal increase surface film boil. These unremoved small hydrogen vapor bubbles on the metal surface create or form an insulating layer which impedes or stops the heat transfer process. Once the uh, vapor bubbles, from a variety of issues, overcomes the actual coolant fluid like steam, it's a real problem. Then the coolant system is out of control. It's irrecoverable until the system or fluid is cool. Now note, the coolant system, uh, coolant system high system pressure does not help the transfer of BTU energy. You see increased PCI keeps the film boil forced upon the coolant system past its surface. Now what's this mean? It means this. If you've got like 30 pounds or 60 pounds of pressure squeezing the fluid to the wall, it's very hard for the heat transfer to take place because you're not fixing the nucleate boil or the boil situation. You're just keeping it pressurized to the surface. All right. Now, sometimes to help overcome system surface failure, okay, you have what's called a highly pressurized coolant systems. Now, sometimes uh, we've got, even in the IndyCar V6 Turbo program, all right, you've got specially designed high pressure coolant systems within the motor, radiator, and hoses to operate a 30 psi. All right, now you can't take a regular automotive system and try to uh, do it. It is specifically designed with aeromotive components to be able to handle that. All right. Again, high system pressure does not help the transference of BTU heat energy. This simply keeps the film boil forced upon the coolant past the surface. Now, with the use of a qualified and effective heat transfer chemistry, the system pressure and surface tension can be reduced, increasing component life and performance. You see, heat transfer chemistry, as uh, individually discovered, also means that higher horsepower engines can operate with lower system pressure. In other words, if you can transfer the heat and, and work with the heat uh, uh, through conviction and everything, you don't have to have the high pressure. All right. And with further efficiency testing, a smaller heat exchanger or radiator with a qualified coolant system treatment could be used to perform an effect, uh, and effectively work as good as a larger radiator without a chemical advantage. So if you have a chemical advantage, you can have a little smaller radiator. If you don't have a chemistry performance advantage, you have to have a large radiator to just try to disperse the heat. Alloy aluminum gases, or what's called metal hydrides, or hydrogen vapor bubbles, 
you see as alloys and metals are molten and created, hydrogen is stored. This hydrogen storage within the metal process through molten creation, etc., is called metal hydrides. Metal alloys decompose as they are subject to heat and electricity. Now, aluminum is a very heat sensitive and electroactive metal. Hydrogen, originally chopper than the metal when it was created, is released like a water vapor. This process is called physical vapor deposition. Okay, in other words, breakdown. The metal hydrates uh, greatly accelerates the aluminum corrosion process. Further, unremoved, removed, these small uh, hydrogen vapor bubbles on the metal surface creates or forms an insulating layer which impedes or stops the heat transfer process. Note, if a qualified coolant system chemistry is not used, the metal surface aluminum is not coated or protected. Then, under heat, gases, aluminum metal hydrides are released. These alloy gases create standing coolant system pressure. Now, aluminum is a flexible metal subject to expansion and contraction greater than steel. This opens the pores of the metal. If these pores are not coated with the correct chemistry, the heat or alloy gases, as we mentioned before, in the form of hydrogen bubbles, will release into the coolant system with a strength of 10 times compressibility of the fluid itself. Hydrogen vapor bubbles, or alloy gases, will not disperse and disappear. They will continue to be released and continue to multiply, further increasing accelerated damage, uh, or what we call metal surface decomposition. The metal hydrides can be, con can be controlled with coolant chemistry. Now let me say this, even though you do have this problem, it can be controlled. Further, release of these vapor bubbles from the localized high temperature or hot boiling region of the metal surface is important to improve a heat transfer and performance capability. That is an issue. Now the answer is you use a qualified coolant system chemistry with advanced chemical technology that, uh, that should coat the metal surfaces. You see, when you have advanced surface coating and surface tension reduction technology, it will allow these hydrogen bubbles to disperse evenly within the coolant system without causing any form or cavitations. In other words, it will control it. Another issue beyond the hydrogen bubbles is what's called anti-foam protection. This control is very, very important. Now, when you do not have the salts and the minerals and the uh, contaminants floating around and eroding, much of the antifoam process is controlled. But you still need a chemistry inside of the water to protect against this, all right? So you need a treatment with an excellent antifoam performance uh, to prevent the foaming process. Another area that's very important is what's called cavitation protection. In other words, you're still going to have localized areas of nucleate or film boiling. That's just how it works within the cylinder head and cylinder walls, especially near the top of the piston compression area. All right, And uh, you see these cavitations when these vapor bubbles collapse and they come in contact with a cooler liquid. All right, This vapor bubble collapsing process is called cavitation. All right, It creates little itty bitty shock waves within the fluid. And uh, if not controlled, it can cause catastrophic erosion of the aluminum. All right. So what we need to have is an advanced chemical technology to be able to work with the natural cavitation process, protect the metals in the coolant passages, the block, the cylinder head, the radiator. What is this coolant system treatment? Well, I'm glad that you asked. It's called Synmax uh, uh, water cooler. All right. Now, we can have the treatment here, which provides everything that you need. As we stated, you don't have to double treat it. You just get one bottle, handles like uh, uh, three gallons, all right? Provide the system performance repeatability, coolant system efficiency, heat transfer capability, uh, uh, reduces the temperature in the cylinder head about four to five degrees, in the radiator and the delta T about 40 degrees from the hot to the cold in 100 to 120 degree weather, protection of the uh, steel with the rust and the aluminum with the corrosion, and uh, pH balance and acidic control, water pump bearings, etc. It is an amazing product. Now, if you don't want to have to get uh, three gallons of technical quality uh, distilled water, then we ask that you use the Synmax Water Cooler Premix. It is a true racing coolant product. Simple to use, direct use, and it says the ha same high performance with the required 5% 
FIA treat rate with 95% stilled water. So why is this 5% treat rate important? Because your major uh, sanctioned bodies with what we call the sporting regulation or the general rules of competition, everything from FIA and Le Mans and Formula One to NASCAR, ARCA, SCCA, IndyCar, and everybody else, it is a 5% FIA treat rate. That is accepted and that is what the uh, premix and the concentrate does with uh, three gallons of distilled water. Now, uh, what does this look like when it when it's all working well, here we've got a qualified radiator manufacturer was given here, all right, and we've had uh, over 2,000 racing miles on this engine. We had a steel block motor with aluminum radiator and all the other components, and the radiator inside uh, looked like brand new. The only reason we had to take it out is because at the end of the year there was a accident, a championship race, and uh, the radiator was donated to the cause. Furthermore, uh, at the highest levels of performance in engineering, you've got the uh, uh, Indy Series with a V6 turbo. And here we have uh, one of the en engine manufacturers to which we had here. And uh, it was a Delar radiator. It was a $9,000 radiator and uh, made by PWR. And what you have here is after 5,000 racing miles, the cleanliness of the radiator. Now the only reason they had to replace it was because you see a little damage that was from small bits of rocks and, and uh, contamination hitting it at 230 miles an hour and they just wanted a, a fresh radiator for the new season. So they were able to donate it and thank you KV Racing. And uh, again, a little more deeper. Here's the cleanliness when you use a qualified coolant treatment with the distilled water. Here's a closer look this is what your radiator can look like. You see, it provides complete system cleanliness and pressure control and performance repeatability. All right. You, what you need to do is be able to use it from the engine build to all the technical to the racing. And then what we need to do is prevent the problems before they happen. Prevent that rust and contamination, corrosion. Protect that engine and radiator. Now, who's used this product? Well, we've got uh, five IndyCar Manufacturer Championships from 2012, 13, 14, 15, and 16 with the V6 turbocharged engine at uh, 700 horsepower. The motor's got to last 2,500 miles with a peak of 12,000 horsepower. This product, the Cinemax water cooler, has been under technical directive with these major championships with the engine builder. Furthermore, if you need a product uh, that uh, to control everything uh, in the winter time, they were able to use our bio-based product. It's called Aeromotive Coolant Number Seven, and uh, it's a tremendous product uh, for winter requirements. The Aeromotive Coolant has all of the uh, qualified requirements of the water cooler performance, but it's bio-based, long life, as as you can read here. Furthermore, the aeromotive coolant and or the uh, water cooler uh, performance is uh, designed and proven to durability in racing and now is designed for military, marine, and commercial automotive applications, gasoline or diesel, for extreme duty long life applications. So that ends our presentation for uh, heat vapors, bubbles, and foaming and cavitation uh, performance. And as Wayne Lensing says, the racing radiator cleanliness and performance uh, equals championship results. So on behalf of Wayne Lensing, Danny Lensing, Performance Parts Supply, and the left-hander chassis group, including Synmax Performance Lubricants, we want to thank you for the time that we spent together learning about heat vapors and foaming and cavitations. Should you desire to purchase the Synmax product, uh, please get a hold of us at synmaxoil.com. Give us a call in the Chicagoland area at 815-389-9999. And if you have any technical questions, send us an email at office at aeromotiveresearch.com and we'll help you and uh, see you at the next presentation. Thank you and good day.